So we know that in the days of uh, Mordechai and Esther, it says the Pasuk, in those days, when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne, he made a feast 180 days. What do you mean in those days? Sorry, the Midrash says that the ministering angels were upset. They complained to Hashem. They said, Hashem, the temple is destroyed and the evildoer, he sits at the feasts. What is this? You get you let uh, uh, Hashverosh make a big party like this. Uh, the, the temple is destroyed. The Jews are in a very hard situation. You're letting this uh, Rasha do whatever he wants. So now uh, Hashem says what? The Midrash says? Hashem answered, it's okay. I give days against days. What does that mean? It means that Hashem was saying, I gave my children a day of serenity. I gave them the temple originally. I gave them days of peace, days of bracha, days of goodness. And what did they use it for? And they you misused it. What was the days of glory, days of peace, days of goodness? Shabbat. And what did they do in those days? The Pasuk says in Nehemiah, in those days, same words, in those days, I saw Yehuda treading wine presses on Shabbat, loading donkeys with all kinds of burdens. And they brought to Jerusalem on the Shabbat day. Hashem says, I give days corresponding to days. The days of Shabbat you did not keep. And now I will give them to who? To Hashverosh, to make it a feast and to make that day into holiday for himself. Why? Because we didn't utilize the days Hashem gives us. So he took it away from us. He gave it to somebody else. The Shefa that we said last day, there's a certain, certain Shefa is supposed to come. If you use the right, you get it. If you don't use the right, Hashem gives it to somebody else. He says, I have another address for it. Don't worry. So therefore, that's why Hashem answered the angels. Now, we have to realize that from all the holidays, Pesach, the Torah talks about Sukkot, Torah talks about Shavuot, Yom Kippur. It all calls it by its name explicitly in the Torah. There's one day, one holiday, that doesn't say in the Torah its name. It calls it a different name completely. Rosh Hashanah. Nowhere you'll see the Torah calls Rosh Hashanah Yom Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't call it Rosh Hashanah. It calls it Yom Azikaron. Yom Trua. It doesn't call it day of uh, the head of the year. It calls it uh, different names. The question is why? So, the Rion Tanai says something beautiful. He says, Hashem hid this, this holiday. It says, Bikse Leon Chagenu. Right? You have to go on this holiday is when the moon is covered. The moon is covered on the first of the month, right? New moon. But really, it represents how the significance of the holiday is covered. Covered from who? Covered from the rest of the world, from the Goyim. Hashem gave us a shefa called Rosh Hashanah. First of all, you have to realize one of the biggest hasadim Hashem did to us, that He told us when He's judging us. You know? So I some people, they, could get the, they get pulled over for a silly thing, and they, they say, oh, your license is suspended. You were arresting you. What? Yeah, you were going 20 over, that's it, we're arresting you because you have to, you have to spend a license, driving with suspended license. Nobody told me. How did I know? My, I didn't know my driver's license was suspended. How was I supposed to know? No, we don't have to tell you. It's, you have to know. You, you should have checked why, you, why, why your license is suspended. But why Hashem doesn't do that to us? Hashem says, no, I give you Rosh Hashanah, I give you Relu, I tell you to get ready, I tell you exactly when you're getting judged and you can sit there and change as much as you want. Now imagine a judge wants to judge you, he, IRS or uh, DOB or uh, all these uh, agencies. They, they, would, they don't want you to know when they're coming. They want to just catch you in the moment. But Hashem's not like that. Hashem says, no, I'll tell you. I'll give you time to prepare. And that's called the Shefa or Rosh Hashanah. It's so hidden that even in the Torah where the five books of Moses, or even Gleam study, Hashem hid it even there and did not let the Goyim know about it. It's called Yom HaZikaron, the day of remembrance. What does that mean? I don't know. If you don't know any oral Torah, so you don't know it's day of Rosh Hashanah. Only the Jewish people know it's day of Rosh Hashanah. It's a, it's a sod. It's a beautiful uh, chesed Hashem gave us. So therefore a person has to utilize it. What happens if you don't utilize it? Hans uh, Shalom, we don't want it to be given away to other people. We see the same thing where the Gemara says that uh, that uh, uh, with the, when it comes to um, Avram Avinu, right? It says that uh, Avram Avinu had a choice to serve a Dazara or to give up his life. So he was thrown in the fire, and uh, and he didn't know Hashem was going to save him. And he went in the fire, and he didn't misiot nefesh, right? So you see that what? That we have inside of us from Avram Avinu, given as a spiritual inheritance, the ability to be most nefesh, the ability to make chidush in the olam, you know, the ability to make something new, and show dedication and, 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 and a highest levels of, of service of Hashem. And what? And it all depends 
if we use it. If we don't use it, so who takes it? Sometimes the goyim can take it away from us, the shefa. Mr. Nefesh, who, who, who has Mr. Nefesh today? If you see how the Ishmael's children, they serve Hashem, and they, they, they go and do Mr. Nefesh for what they believe is right, they're willing to give up their whole life. They're willing to give up their whole life in a moment for to do what's right. So if a person has to know, if we don't use it, it's going to be given to someone else. As we know, the best place to use Mesirat Nefesh, we'll end with this, is in, in is learning Torah. Our sages say in the Midrash, in Kohelet Rabbah, that a thousand entered the Bit Midrash. And only one of them comes out capable to do halachic uh, decisions. So you have to fill the yeshivot with a thousand. That way at least you get one. They used to say, if you only have 500, so you only get half a rabbi. But if you want to get a full rabbi who knows everything, you need to have a thousand in there. Because if you don't have enough, so you have a guy who half knows. And then half knows is worse than he doesn't know at all. If he doesn't know at all, at least he'll say, I don't know. But half knows, he thinks he knows, and then he makes mistakes. So therefore, a person has to have a thousand. But what? What does it mean that you have to have a thousand? You, you, uh, you, you, the rabbi again says, I thought it meant you have, there's always only a rare individual that can become a leading scholar. But now we could say differently. We could say each person is granted the resources to be able to achieve greatness. When a thousand people come into Medvedrash and they could become great scholars, most of them don't use their gifts. Most of them don't come out to be successful. Why? It's because they might give into their laziness, their bad desires, whatever it is. But when Hashem sees one of them who studies with total dedication, Mesut Nefesh, what does he do? He takes all the shefa from the other 999 and stuffs it into one guy. Why? Because they didn't use their shefa. Hashem takes it away and stuffs it into this guy who tries. So if he didn't have a thousand there, so he would just be like a regular guy. But if now that you have a thousand and they didn't use their potential properly, so now that he gets stuff with all the koch from all of them, so it becomes gedol ador. So therefore, that's why it's so important, this concept of utilizing the shef Hashem gives you and having a thousand in the yeshiva.